Hello everyone and welcome to the CERTIP and ESTCP Management System, or SEMS, training video. This training video is intended for current principal investigators and SEMS 1 users signing into SEMS 2 for the first time. SEMS 2 is where principal investigators and their teammates will go to access project information and begin reporting monthly and quarterly project data. I will walk through an overview of the new site and be sure to highlight any new features that were not in SEMS 1. For any users that are not familiar with SEMS 1, it was an old management system for the CERTIP ESTCP program that has been officially replaced by SEMS 2 as of October 20th, 2017. While this video is primarily for SEMS 1 users, moving to SEMS 2, it will also serve as a valuable resource for any new users simply looking for additional guidance. The first page you will see in SEMS 2 is the sign-in page. If you haven't created an account, use the Create Account button here to do so. If you have, then you will need to sign in. The first area of SEMS 2 that we are going to go over is the proposal, submission, and management area. When I use the word area, I am referring specifically to the icons that you see at the top right of your screen. These icons will take you to the proposal submission and management, project management, and help areas of the site. The help area will be populated with user guides and frequently asked questions specific to the area that you are currently on. With that said, let's go over proposal submission and management. This area has all of the information that you need to know about your proposal, the status it is in, and the due dates for any revisions that may be requested of you. Solicitation information will always be added to this area as well. Search for specific solicitations by selecting a year, and then navigating to the optional organization type field and selecting the one that correlates to you. You can always return to the proposal management area to respond to new solicitations. Now let's move to the next area. This is project management. Here you will either see a list of projects if you are working on more than one, or you will be taken to your project dashboard. The project dashboard is your one-stop shop for project management data and is the easiest and fastest way to navigate through SEMS. From your dashboard, you can navigate to your actions page. The actions page is the next most important page for tracking project progress. This is where you will see all of your assigned actions. All assigned, incomplete actions will show up on this list with a title, action type, due date, and any associated deliverable if applicable. If an action is overdue, this page will alert you of how long it has been overdue. For example, on this page, the July 2017 QPR is 95 days overdue. If you want to see completed actions, then you navigate to the Show Closed button and they will appear on the page as well. The same filter can be applied to all actions and are associated with documents. If you want to see all closed actions also associated with documents, and you go and select both filters. The Actions page will remind you that you need to submit your monthly financial reports, quarterly progress reports, and much more. Next up, we have our Contacts page. Startup ESTCP projects are led by one organization, but often have many others associated with them. Whether you have one directly funded performer or four, there tend to be a number of collaborators across a team. The lead PI, co-PI, financial point of contact, and technical point of contact are all essential to a project's reporting and success. The contacts page in SEMS 2 is extremely valuable and will help users keep all of their team members up to speed. Your contacts page will allow you to grant your team members access to all of your project pages, documents, and more. To add a project contact, 
click on the Add Contact button and enter all of the required fields in the new contact loop modal. Make sure you enter the required information, otherwise you will receive a message or an error from the modal requesting additional info. Once the contact is entered, you can add a contact collaborator or a project collaborator. In order to do so, you have to make sure that there is already a contact in the system and then use the Make Collaborator link listed to the right. Once a collaborator is added and they have a Sense2 account, they will have access to all of your project pages and have the same level of permission that PIs have. Before you receive any funding for your project, you must have at least one financial point of contact and one technical point of contact. There is additional information about why this is in the help section at the top of the contacts page. And if you have any other questions regarding this, then you can ask your program's TA. Next is the project plan, project overview, and field research or demonstration site area in overview and plan. This is where all project plan data, including deliverables and tasks, will be located. All project deliverables, including demonstration plans, final reports, white papers, and more, will be submitted through this page. Regardless of whether you have a startup or ESTCP project, your project plan will consist of tasks and subtasks like the example here. As you can see, this project plan is structured simply with one large task and many subtasks. One major change on the project plan page from SEMS 1 is how to submit deliverables. You will submit your deliverables through the project plan page. Find the subtask with the deliverable you wish to submit. Navigate to the Upload button. Select your file. And then close out. Once you upload the file and you hit Submit on the modal, this will send the file to your TA and they will approve or reject the del deliverable. Other subtasks only require adding a complete date, and then your TA will either approve or reject. Your project plan data will vary depending on how organized it is in SEMS 1, so please pay careful attention to all project plan data that has been imported and notify the pro program office if you see any issues. For additional project plan guidance, make sure to ask your program area technical assistant for help. Next, I'll show you the project overview page. Your project overviews can be found here. Your new start project overview, interim results, and final project overview will all be entered by our team and accessible here. Next up is the demonstration sites. Field sites will be added and stored on this page. Users are responsible for adding any new sites for the duration of their project. The modal makes adding sites quick and easy. Moving down the navigation menu, we have project financials. All financial information can be found on this page. Your DFP information will be found on the Directly Funded Performers page, where proposal and planned funding totals for projects and for individual DFPs can be found. Make sure that all of the financial values look correct and up to date. If there is a message prompting you to add a financial or technical point of contact, please follow the instructions in the help box and contact the program office with any questions. From here, there are two ways to access your expenditure plan. You can either go through financials and click on the year to navigate to the specific expenditure plan, or 
go to your actions page. You can click on the pending MFR action item. This will take you to the same page. The expenditure plan page is almost identical to the page used in SEMS 1, with a few minor changes to make it easier to edit and submit your expenditure plan. So as you can see, on this page we have a MFR for July 2017 that has zero planned dollars. All you need to do is edit the MFR and hit save and it will submit the change to your TA for approval. Once your TA receives the notification that your expenditure plan is ready, they will either approve or reject and send it back to you. You will use this page to submit your expenditure plan values for the entire year as well as your monthly actual values. If your project is a group effort with multiple performers, you can see their individual funding information here as well. All you need to do is select the directly funded performer you want to view using this drop down on the right. You can also see all financial files related to contracts, such as contract mods, PRNCs for non-federal performers, or MIPRs for federal performers. Just click on the View Files link. Under the Progress section, you will find data from all past QPR submissions, including updates, concerns, publications, and any any action items related to IPRs. The QPR modal can also be accessed through your dashboard and actions page. To enter information for a specific QPR, open the link for the month and year. And submit your updates to the program. If you have no concerns to report to the program office, then do not fill in the concerns field. Anything that is written here will be sent to the program office and alert them of your concerns once they are submitted. In addition to the updates and concerns for QPRs, you can navigate to publications and add any publications related to your project here. For projects transferred from SEMS 1, you may want to take a minute to reformat any citations entered prior to the move in order to change them to our recommended format located here. For any in-progress review meeting updates or action items, you're going to use the IPR section. This will also show you planned IPRs for the future and ones that you attended in the past. Last but not least, there's the documents page, where you can find all project documents, including original and revised proposal documents, as well as any other miscellaneous files you upload. These will include documents submitted for review and going both through the document review and management processes. All project files will be available to you, your collaborators, and the program office. Documents tab will function essentially as a document storage file. If you have additional questions regarding the move from SEMS 1, SEMS 2, or general management, please contact the appropriate email shown in the help area of the site. Thank you for watching and being a part of the Startup and ESTCP program.